Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. People are standing outside U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar's office in Moorhead this evening saying enough is enough. They're referring to tragedy striking our nation this past weekend. Two mass shootings breaking out in Texas and Ohio, leaving over 30 people dead. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard joins us live from the scene with more. Callie. Hi, Andrea. That's right. I'm here outside U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar's office, and I'm here with one of the organizers of the event. This is Chad Johnson here from Moorhead. So tell me, why should people come out to this event today? You know, we were just looking for an opportunity to use some of our anguish and energy um, to try and push for a change in uh, the gun laws in the country. Um, too many people are dying. And you said that people are bringing poems, they're writing songs, they're bringing posters. What are they saying on these? You know, we've invited anyone to come and, and speak to the group. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, it's barely 24 hours old, so we don't really know what to expect. Um, my husband and I were sitting around yesterday and, um, like I said, just looking for an outlet for our energy. So. And if you were to write a letter to the senator, what would your letter say? Be asking for... Uh, uh, universal background checks is a, a great place to start. I think something like 90%, greater than 90% of Americans support universal background checks. Um, it's an easy win. Um, it's time. It's time. Okay, and stick with Valley News Live. We also have a statement from U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar that we'll be sharing with you in the 5.30 and 6 o'clock. Uh, reporting live in Moorhead, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. Callie, thank you. We will have much more on this rally tonight on the Fargo CW at 9 o'clock and Valley News Live 10 at 10. President Trump addressed a stunned nation following the mass shootings in Dayton and El Paso over the weekend. The president pointed to the El Paso suspects' racist online posts and said the nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. He added that hate has no place in America. And while calling for bipartisan solutions to years of mass shootings in America, he did not mention his tweet earlier today regarding stronger gun purchase background checks. I am open and ready to listen and discuss all ideas that will actually work and make a very big difference. Republicans and Democrats have proven that we can join together in a bipartisan fashion to address this plague. The president says he's ordering the Department of Justice to pour more resources into detecting potential shooters before the act. With not one, but two more mass shootings, as we mentioned this past weekend, many people are looking for ways to cope. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz has more on how to talk with your family about the tragedies and why it's best not to desensitize yourself to the incidents. Patrick Gulan teaches high school in Wapatan. It's definitely something that, as a teacher, that you think about, okay, what do you do in this situation? More and more, the more you hear about it, it's like, okay, what would I do if this happened? Yet two more shootings over the weekend leave many trying to cope. It's very challenging to hear confusing, stressful, violent related kind of events. How are they supposed to understand it? How are they supposed to feel? What are they supposed to think? Sean Brotherson at NDSU has written on how to talk to children about terrorism. You'll see often a lot of anxiety, a sense of insecurity, like, okay, so if they know that this happened at a grocery store or at a library or something, then they're concerned. Well, we go to the library. Brotherson calls it vicarious trauma and says it affects all of us at any age. When you see it on the news so much, just something that you start to think of like, wow, it's happened at schools, malls, concerts, that it is something that could happen, yeah. Here at West Acres, the mall's VP tells me people generally feel very safe inside these doors. We take safety and security very seriously. It's, it's one of our top priorities here. We train, we plan. We have drills that we do on a regular basis for all sorts of scenarios. Public places like this are huge and you never know what's going to happen, but you hope it's not going to. Would you guys say that all the news on it has desensitized you to it, or would you say it's made you more concerned each time? When you see it all the time, it's definitely something where like, oh, it just there it is again, or it's another, another murder, another this, another that. I, I mean, there definitely is something to it where it's just kind of like, it's almost like it's the norm. Unfortunately. And while it may seem easier to desensitize yourself to these incidents these days, experts say you shouldn't. People are less likely 
to be desensitized and more likely to be empathetic when they know those individuals who are hurt by violence, when they hear their stories. In Fargo, Rose Skivitz, Valley News Live. Sean Brotherson at NDSU says parents should reassure children during times like these. He offers ways to cope, like attending a memorial service or donating to a fund or doing something good for your community. And coming up after the break, we'll take a look at the latest news surrounding those shootings. After morning storms, we warmed up nicely. Let's find out what's ahead this evening with Hutch in No Wait Weather. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah, those morning storm dumped abundant rainfall in the central part of the Dakota's northern Stutzman County picking up quite a bit. Uh, Jamestown at the airport there, 5100. It's only 1400s here, the FM uh, airport reading there, but we did get reports of about a half of an inch around town. Some other big winners, Fergus Falls and Valley City with over an inch of rainfall reported there. Those storms exit the region and a few are still rumbling through the Twin Cities area. For us, it's going to be a quiet night. Here's a look at uh, the Doppler radar estimates of rainfall about seven tenths not far from Horace and Fergus Falls estimates of around two inches in places temperatures slipping through the 80s this evening quiet weather we're windy right now but those should subside as we get closer to sunset 70s late this evening and on our way into the 60s for a very quiet and restful night's weather but more storms are in the Tuesday forecast. I'll have your outlook here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. A major Moorhead road is now back open to the public after being closed for over four hours this afternoon. Moorhead police say they were called to Center Avenue and 14th Street around 9.30 this morning on a call of a suicidal man swinging from the rafters of a railroad bridge. Police closed Center Avenue from 14th to 21st Streets as they negotiated with the man inside the bridge. They say the Moorhead School District provided pole vault mats to put under the bridge for the man's safety. Police say the man was uncooperative but eventually surrendered after they used a pepper ball on him. He was then taken to a local hospital for mental health evaluations and care. The Polk County Sheriff's Office wants you to know that a business in the county received a fraudulent letter from DotService.com. The letter tells the business they are past due on their biennial update and to contact DotService.com right away to avoid civil penalties and possible deactivation of their U.S. DOT number. This company wanted a credit card number over the phone and no other payment form is allowed. This letter is a well-known scam and authorities are urging you not to give out personal or financial information. An attorney in Minnesota today announced new criminal charges filed against singer R. Kelly. A Hennepin County attorney announced that the criminal charges stem from an incident that allegedly took place in Minneapolis in July of 2001. The victim, who was under 18 at the time, says she approached Kelly for an autograph and the singer gave her his phone number and told her to call him. When the teenager called, she was told to go to his hotel, where she was then taken to his suite and offered $200 to take off her clothes and dance with him. When she agreed, the victim says uh, uh, Kelly took off his clothes as well and began dancing with her. A 21-year veteran of the U.S. Air Force has announced he's running for Congress in Minnesota, specifically looking to unseat longtime incumbent Colin Peterson. Dave Hughes sat down recently to discuss his plans as he prepares for a tough race. Running to, to serve and represent the people of western Minnesota. You know, there's a whole lot of problems in Washington, D.C. Uh, I think uh, politicians of, uh, on both sides of the aisle... The longer they're there, the, they tend to be less effective and they don't listen to their people. And I think that's the case here in Western Minnesota. So I'm simply running because I think I represent the values of Western Minnesota better than Colin Peterson does. Hughes says he wants to be a fierce ally to President Trump's agenda. The North Dakota Department of Transportation Driver's License Office in Fargo will start a major renovation project this week. Officials say starting today, all written knowledge tests and CDL hazardous materials knowledge tests will be conducted at the North Dakota State College of Science Building, Fargo location, at 1305 19th Avenue North, room 127. Officials say they hope the renovation helps decrease wait times in Fargo. Our average wait time right now in the Fargo office is about an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, so we thought that, you know, we need, need to do a remodel. We need to get, you know, some things moving. And we thought with two more windows, that's going to help us out quite a bit. The project, the project is expected to take up to a year to complete. The community and zoo in Wapaton are mourning the loss of a beloved white Bengal tiger. 
The Chahinkapa Zoo posted on Facebook saying a tiger named Nina passed away on August 3rd. Nina lived to be 17 years old. Tigers typically live 10 years in the wild. The zoo says she was diagnosed with pancreatitis recently and received excellent veterinary care to keep her comfortable. A nation